नरेंद्र मोदी रघुराम राजन बराक ओबामा लालू प्रसाद यादव राहुल गांधी अरविंद केजरीवाल व्लादिमीर पुतिन अमित शाह डेविड कैमरन प्रणब मुखर्जी नवाज शरीफ एंगला मर्कल अरुण जेटली एंड वन सार्केस्टिक लिटिल बास्टर्ड वेल दैट्स एक्चुअली काइंड ऑफ ट्रू द वीक्स अब्सर्डिटीज विद स्वेर्स बर्नी वाओ दिस इज नाइस Hello hello and welcome to the show it's our first ever episode so if you're watching this i'm assuming you've gotten here by accident but that's fine because we really need all the views we can get now that you're here let's get started with the week's absurdities new air india chief ashwani lohani wants to make air india profitable and says that it's the ultimate challenge um no Moses parting the Red Sea was the ultimate challenge. 300 Spartans against a million Persians was the ultimate challenge. Jackie Bhagnani signing a movie that wasn't produced by his father, that's the ultimate challenge. Trying to make Air India profitable is like a million times harder than any of that. But congratulations on the new job. I wish you the very best. Sanjay Raut, a senior Shiv Sena MLA, has compared the actions of the men who blackened Sudhendra Kulkarni's face two indian soldiers fighting pakistan the men were even felicitated by uddhav thakre with raut saying that if soldiers can be given paramveer chakras then why can't we felicitate these men solid comparison i i can't even argue with it in fact to illustrate how accurate this comparison is let's take a look at a paramveer chakra wadi um how about yogendra singh yadav His team was tasked with capturing Tiger Hill. The climb was steep, snowbound and rocky. Grenadier Yadav volunteered to lead the climb. When the team was spotted, the enemy, of course, opened intense automatic grenade, rocket and artillery fire, killing his commander and two of his fellow soldiers. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Grenadier Yadav crawled up to the enemy position to silence it and in the process sustained multiple injuries. Not giving a crap, however, Grenadier Yadav continued climbing towards the enemy positions. lobbing grenades and continuously firing from his weapon he killed four enemy soldiers in close combat and silenced the automatic fire despite his multiple injuries he refused to be evacuated and continued the charge inspired by this gallant act the platoon charged on and captured tiger hill so yeah basically the same thing in other news volkswagen has halted sales of its polo model in india Some say it could be related to the emissions scandal Volkswagen is currently facing, but Indian representatives have denied this. Look, guys, you don't need to worry about this cheating stuff here. You're a European company operating in India. If you didn't cheat us, we'd be disappointed. You know us, we love getting screwed over by white people. A Hindu right-wing group in Ahmedabad has declared that it will ban the entry of Muslims at Garba events. to prevent love jihad they have stated that every boy who enters will have to have a tilak on his forehead and will be sprayed with gau mutra commonly known as cow urine yes i'm not making that up hindu dudes who want to rock out to some garba will get a face full of cow urine as they walk in the door guys have you ever thought that maybe the reason all these hindu girls are running off is because all the hindu dudes smell like cow piss i mean look maybe i'm wrong maybe hindu girls really like the smell of cow piss but if that were true this would have already happened new ax gaumutra drives all the right wing hindutva girls crazy that's an okay tagline i have another one wait i have another one ax gaumutra start a riot for our top story We're going to Bihar, which in real life is considered a terrible idea. The first phase of Bihar state polls have come to a close, and if you aren't following this election, you're missing out on some grade A comedy. This is an actual video of Lalu Prasad Yadav on Dub Smash dissing Narendra Modi. That video is fun, but let's all agree that Lalu's ear fuzz. needs to be called in for a disciplinary hearing 
Actually, can we move that graphic a little to the left? I feel like his hair is touching me. A little bit more? Okay, thank you. These elections also have so many characters that by the end of it, it's going to feel less like politics and more like a Priyadarshan movie. Yes, that looks like an absolute mess, but it's a hugely important mess. First up, there's the BJP. This election is crucial to them because that sweeping victory in 2014 had practically no effect on the Rajya Sabha, where the BJP is still a minority. And because state assemblies elect members to the Rajya Sabha, a win for the BJP would allow them to increase their influence in the upper house. This election is also important for the state's favourite frenemies, Nitesh Kumar and Lalu Prasad Yadav. And the fact that they've come together means that these are truly dark times. In the past, Lalu Prasad Yadav has said the Nitish Kumar government is killing democracy. Nitish Kumar, once called Lalu Prasad Yadav, a frustrated man who has mental bankruptcy. These aren't the quotes of political allies. These are the quotes of two men who will finish each other off in gangs of Vasepur style showdowns. Their insane relationship doesn't even end there. If you look at the pre-polls coming out of Bihar, the BJP-led NDA has a clear lead. But Nitish Kumar is still the people's overwhelming choice for CM. In fact, one of the only things hurting his popularity is his tie-up with Mr. Irfaz. And that's understandable... Move the graphic. And that's understandable because A, he's been convicted on corruption charges and B, he's been convicted on corruption charges. Finally, there's Ram Vilas Paswan. At best, he'll help the NDA bring in a bit of the Dalit vote. But he deserves a mention not because of his current standing, but because of his absurdly good resume. This man has held important positions and portfolios under six different prime ministers. Of course, that's only because he switches sides based on whoever's going to win. He swapped allegiances so often that his current party flag is a whiteboard. The key players aside, this election is being held in Bihar, which apart from being Prakash Jha's favourite filming location, also has a history of serious election malpractice. Just this week, a sting operation showed JDU candidate Avdesh Kushwaha accepting a bribe of rupees 4 lakhs in exchange for favours down the road. Uh, is it just me or does 4 lakhs sound really cheap? Actually, that sounds like a great deal. How did they get such a good deal? Oh, yeah. Flipkart's big billion day sale. That's, I remember now, I remember now. They did have 50% off on Bihar politicians. I remember, yes. This is nothing new, of course. Corruption has always been rampant in the state. And this year, a survey by the Office of Bihar's Chief Electoral Officer showed that a mind-boggling 80% of voters in Bihar think it's okay to sell their vote. 80%. Remember, this is a state that makes up 8.6% of India's population and elects 16 members to the Rajya Sabha. Now, you could criticize Bihar's election circus or you could applaud them for their honesty. Everyone says they're fighting corruption, but Bihar knows corruption isn't going anywhere. So they've made it systemic. Everyone says the caste battle is over. But Bihar understands that even a century on, divide and rule is still the best way to go. Everyone shouts about ideologies, but Bihar knows full well that it's all about the power, baby. That's our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. If the world doesn't end, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.